We were here last time with you, and we talked about God is faithful. Amen. And we want to continue that thought process yes. and talk about uh, the faithfulness of God. If, if you don't mind, can you help me shift this? Let's move this to this here. I'm going to change up just a little bit. If you just turn it around to where, there you go. Mm-hmm. Perfect. And um, it, it's, um, so God is faithful. We want to talk about that um, topic, that thought process, and I want you to pause a little bit for me, okay? I, I want you to look back over your life and think just briefly when you were, let's go to when you were a child, right? We had our mom and dad with us, right? And we were really depended on them, correct? Right. All right, and as we matriculated through life, mm -hmm. let's go to young adult 20s. Okay. They had taught us a lot of things and we began to really grow in our own personal faith, mm -hmm. right? And we began to develop relationships with people and start working just really kind of growing in our own life. Amen. And as we matriculated through life, and as we grew as an adult, we began to really start having situations and circumstances that we had to really lean on our own faith in God. Mm -hmm. We had to really be able to develop a relationship with God. And now at this stage of your life, yes kind of, in retrospect, what is the one most consistent thing in your life? It's been God. You probably have some friends that you went to school with, you know, as a elementary, middle school, and high school, but you haven't seen them consistently <laughs> You haven't been in her space consistently. If you would see a friend from high school, you would probably exchange pleasantries and start talking about the good old days. Amen. But the goal today is to help us understand is you trace back your whole life, there's only been one consistency and that's been God. Amen. The one consistent thing and the one dependable thing has been God. And it lets us know that in, in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5 and 6, if you exegete the word properly, in its proper context, it's trying to teach us that, very simple, mm -hmm. that God will never leave nor forsake us. Mm -hmm. When we break that down, basically what he's trying to teach us is that it is evident in our life that God is consistently present. Amen. He is consistently present even when you don't feel him. Amen. Even when you go through trials and tribulations of your life, he is consistently there. Amen. As much as you have great relationship with your spouse or friends or family, they cannot consistently be there. Amen. It says that this points to the evidence that we should walk a life of faith, appearing and knowing that our lives are really a walk of faith, not by sight, because God says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Also, the word there, never leaving you nor forsake you, means that the Lord will provide all that you need for this life of faith. Amen. That God will provide all that you need according to your life and faith. Also, it states that he will never fail you. Have you ever been disappointed in anybody? I mean, people don't try to fail us, but they do. Amen. 
And when it says he will never leave thee nor forsake thee, it's basically saying, I, God, will not fail you. He will not fail you and I. Whatever we face, he's going to be there, which means that he's not going to abandon you and leave you alone. So he's present. He was consistent. He won't fail you. But then also, the word never leave thee nor forsake thee. The word forsake means he would not turn his back on you. God cannot leave you. He's consistent. And he will not abandon you. And more important, he won't turn his back on you. With, with that being said... The, the God we serve, there's a couple of things I want to give us today that principles is when we talk about that he will not fail you nor forsake you. It's basically saying that one, we should never question, is there a God? He's unquestionable. Meaning that the God that you and I serve is the living God. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and Mark 12 and 32 says that he is the God that lives and he is the God that lives daily forever. Amen. And so we should not question him. He's El Shaddai. Yeah. The word El means simply that he's almighty. And he, Shaddai means that he's present, which means that he is a God that is self-existing. Nobody created him. <laughs> He created himself. He's always been God. Amen. And God is a living God, which means that he's a God mm -hmm. that's alive and well. Amen. And that you can feel him and you can sense him <clears throat> and you can uh, have his presence. That's why David says, take not thy presence from me. Don't take your hand off of me. So he's an unquestionable God. So he's a self-existing God, which means that in Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 17, it states that, for the Lord your God is the God of all gods. He's the Lord of all lords. And he's almighty. Amen. So when it says he's the Lord of all lords and the God of all gods, there's no God greater <clears throat> than him. There's, there's no, this is, this is going to be interesting. I feel my, <coughs> I was going to teach today. I'm just trying to teach a little lesson. Amen. Amen. A Sunday school lesson. Amen. But I feel my preaching kicking the nuts against the teacher. <laughs> so he's Lord of Lords. Yes, yes. <coughs> King of Kings. Yes. God of gods, yes. which means that if there is a God, he's the greater God. Yes. If there is a Lord, he's the greatest Lord. Yes. And there is no king or nothing greater than him. Amen. And so he's unquestionable because the God that you and I serve, that you can set him high and he still looks low yes. and yet be involved in everything all at the same time, meaning that he can speak to you while he speaks to her, all at the same time, but yet he can speak so differently. Amen. Yes, yes. That's the God of God, our yes. God. That means that he can be with you at work, mm -hmm. in your situation, uh -huh. and yet be with me in a whole nother city all at the same time. Yes. That, that means that <clears throat> he will have it snowing in Chicago, mm -hmm. yet rainy in Seattle, mm -hmm. and yet sunny in Texas, yes. and he's still God of God and Lord of Lord. Yes. No matter where you are, he can be with you yes. and be with your kids all at the same time and take care of that situation while he takes care of your situation. Yes. God of God, <clears throat> Lord of Lords. Amen. And there is no God that is like him. 
And so therefore, Mark 12 and 32 says, inscribe unto him, well, master, thou hast said the truth, for there is one God, and there is none other besides thee. There is no other God besides him. Listen, let's, let's take a look at his resume. In Genesis, he said, let there be, and it was. So he's the only God I know <clears throat> that formed the world by his mere words. Who else has spoke the world into existence? I don't know anybody else that spoke the world into existence. He gave the sea in the ocean its boundaries mm -hmm. and told it to come no farther. Right. Who can control nature like that? Amen. Also, I've learned about him. When you read the Bible, it says that he has the earth and the world in his hands and he turns it on his axle throughout the day. The sun and the moon, did you know, never moves? The sun stays still in his place. The moon stays still in its place. And what he does, he turns the world. And you're thinking that the sun is rising and setting. No, he's just moving it on his axis. That's the God you and I serve. That he can take a world and continue to turn it around on his axis. And you think when you wake up in the morning, the sun is rising. It never moved. He held it in air, in suspense, but it never moves. Now, I, I've read somewhere about a man at the brook, and he was there trying to get something to eat, and God told him to go to the brook. Mm -hmm. Elijah gets to the brook, and he says, I'm going to command the ravens to feed you. Yes. If you look at his resume, he commands a bird <clears throat> to get meat in his mouth, take it to the brook and drop it down for Elijah to eat? Birds fly, but birds don't really go and take food to people. He'll take anything and have it to do something even against his nature. Because birds don't, don't fly and go around and then feeding people. Have you ever had a bird fed you? But when he decided to do a thing, Nature cannot even stop him from doing it. Amen. He can change nature from doing something that it's used to doing. Yes. That's the God that we serve. Amen. Okay, if you keep listening to his resume, they're sitting in a boat. Mm -hmm. He was sleep in the bottom of the boat. Mm -hmm. And a fierce wind, a tempest wind came up. And the disciples in the boat was afraid and nervous and scared about their life being lost. Yeah. They woke him up. Who sleeps in the middle of a storm? I'm thinking to myself, you had to know it was storming out there. They were out on the sea. You had to feel the, the waves <clears throat> of, the, of the water and the winds and the waves. But yet they had to wake him up to let him know that there was a storm. And he got up and told them, ye of little faith, and then spoke to the wind, be quiet. Yeah. And even the winds got quiet. Yeah. That's an unquestionable God that we serve. Yeah. And as you continue to read on and on about his life, I am learning that the God we serve sits high and still is in control. Yeah. Even when we don't understand our life situation, he's still in control. Amen. And so I have no reason to question him because he's indisputable. Amen. And he's a God that is all sufficient and assured. And I have learned through my life that God will never leave me nor forsake me. Amen. And that the God that you and I serve has never ever abandoned us. He's been there all along. Yeah. The second point before I get out of your way is number two is that he's immutable. Immutable means that he's a God that never changed. Yeah. He is so consistent. People change. They change their minds. They decide to do things differently yeah. because they're human beings. But God is the same God in Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 8, the same today, yesterday, and forever. Amen. That the God we serve 
is immutable, which means he does not change. Even in your darkest hour, he's still God. Yeah. Amen. Even when you're on the mountaintops of life, he's still God. Yeah. Even if you have to go through the valley of the shadow of death, he is still God. Amen. Even when everyone else leaves you and forsake you, he's still God. Amen. Every time you wake up in the morning, he is still God. Yeah. He has not changed, he will not change, and he can not change. Yeah. And so therefore, sometimes we put so much faith and hope in a job that we put in God. We should put all of our faith and all of our trust and all of our might and all of our energy in God. Yeah. Because situations are gonna change. People are going to change. Life is going to change. Jobs are going to change. Buildings are going to close down. Things are going to shut down. You are going to change. Your mindset about something going to change. But the God you serve never changed in his character and in his nature. His character and nature never changed. He loves you today. He loves you tomorrow. He'll love you the day after. Because God never changes. Amen. He's not fickle like some of us. I am so glad that my life is not in some people's hands. Amen. I'm so grateful that my life is not dependent on certain people. If they get mad that day, they'd have cut off my blessing. Yes. I've learned about God that I made some mistakes, but he still loves me even in the midst of my mess. Even in my mistakes, he still loves me. There are some blessings I got that I did not deserve. I did not earn, okay? But God in his merciful, mercifulness and his grace and in his loving kindness that is so much better than life, chose to still love me anyway and chose to still bless me anyhow. Yeah. Credit sometimes is bad, but he still blesses me. My mind messed up, he still blesses me. When I didn't, wasn't thinking about him, he thought about me. He has given me numerous blessings that I did not earn. I can't trace back a blessing and say, because I did this, this is why I'm blessed. No, I trace back the hand of God is just consistent in my life. And that he extends grace and mercy to a fragile person such as me. Sometimes I'm like Paul, a oh, wretched man that I am. I am the one that's wretched. I'm the one that's in need of a help. I'm the one that's in need of a savior. I'm the one that need God to regulate my mind, but God still blesses me. Amen. But that's who he is because his nature doesn't change. Oh, I love God. L listen to the word of Psalm 89 and verse 34. It says, it says, my covenant will I not break nor alter the things that has gone out of my lips. He said, my covenant, which means he has a covenant with you. He says, I will not break my covenant with you. I'm always going to have a covenant with you. Even when you mess up, I'm still in covenant relationship with you. So when you are going through things and sometimes when you don't feel like praying, I know sometimes you get discouraged. God still has a covenant with you and he still covers you and keeps you in his care. Yeah, man. Yeah. Even when we sometimes go away. So here's the point, <clears throat> that God is unchangeable yes. and you cannot change God. The third point I wanna make today is that he is a provider. Yeah. According to Philippians chapter 4 and 19, it says, God shall supply all of your need according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. He is the great provider. Yes. He knows what you and I stand in need of before we even know what we stand in need of. And that whatever we need, he is a provisionary God. If you took a look at the people of Israel in the wilderness, in the wilderness, when they got thirsty, there was a rock. And how did they get thirst? They got thirsty because it was in the wilderness, but how did God provide for them? One, every morning, yes. he rained down manna. Mm -hmm. He fed them. Mm -hmm. But then he provided a rock. So what should they do with this rock? He instructed Moses to strike the rock. Yes. <clears throat> and when Moses struck the rock, water came out so they could drink. Yes. What a God we serve. In the middle of the desert, mm -hmm. he has a rock 
and he has them to drink from the rock, Amen. all he had to do was strike the rock yeah. and God provided. Yeah. What is it that you stand in need of today? But whatever you need, God can provide. Yeah. You got to trust the fact that he's a God that can provide it. You got to figure out what the plan and strategy is from God because he can provide it. God is a God that stands in, in the gap for you that when you can't provide from yourself, he will make a means so you can provide. Amen. And so I'm grateful for the fact that he's a God that provides. Yeah. He provides not only what we need from clothes and food and shelter, but sometimes he's a protector. Amen. He gives me that. He provides me with a sense of protection. I need protection. Sometimes I need strength. He provides me with the strength I need. Sometimes I need somebody to <clears throat> touch my mind and regulate my mind and help me because I become so perplexed. He'll provide that to you. Sometimes you need a little insight, you need a little discernment, God, what to do and how to do things. God will provide a way for you to learn and what to do and how to do things. That's why you have to pray and ask God to give me the plan, give me the strategy. What should I do? How should I do it? What should I say? When should I say things? Because he doesn't not only want to provide those things that you need outside of just clothes, but he want to provide you with wisdom. Yeah. The Bible says in James chapter 1, when you lack wisdom, ask, and he'll give you wisdom. And I can guarantee you every morning when you rise, you're standing in need of something. If you need strength, you know, so you can go out the door, God's going to give you the strength you need. If you need protection as you go down the street in your car, God gives you protection. If you need him to be there for your kids, he can be there for your kids. You got to understand that God is the great provider. And no one can provide for you and I like God can provide for us. Yeah. God is a God, I'm telling you, when you stand in need of something, <clears throat> it may not be what you want, but it's going to be what you need. Amen. He said, I should supply all of your need, not all of your wants. And a lot of times we want some stuff, but it may not be what we need. You just need to focus on God. Whatever your need is, seek God for your needs. Yeah. Because he says, I'm going to provide all of your needs. So if you need some strength, if you need some help, if you need some peace, if you need some wisdom, yeah. go to God and get everything you need from him. Amen. And so here, I love what it says here. It says, in, in, in Isaiah 40 and 4, it says, Every valley shall be exhausted, and every mountain shall, every mountain hill shall he make low. And the crooked places he should make straight, and the rough places he makes plain. Which means that every battle you go in, if you need him to take the mountain and bring it down, he brings it down. If you got to go through the valley, he's going to know how to take you through the valley. If you got to go over a bridge, he's going to help you go over the bridge. If you got to go through a storm, he'll be your shelter while you're in the storm. So whatever you stand in need of today, God says, all you got to do is seek me. I'm there to give you whatever you stand in need of because he's a great provider. And so therefore, let me move on and close out here. He is omnipotent. Omnipotent means that he is almighty, all powerful. The only God I know that went to Calvary's cross, yes. hung there and bled and died in Joseph's tomb and he got up with all power in his hand. Yes. The God that you and I serve is a God that is all-powerful, omnipotent, supernatural power. If you're standing at the Red Sea and you're Moses, right, and you got on the left side mountains, mm -hmm. on the right side of mountains, yeah. you spent 400 years in bondage and slavery to um, Pharaoh. And now you are free and Pharaoh releases you and you're free. The heart of Pharaoh changes while you're free and you're leaving that country. Mm -hmm. Now you see Pharaoh's army behind you. You get to the brink of the Red Sea and you have no place to go but forward. But in front of you is the Red Sea <clears throat> and it's flowing, it's deep. The God you serve told Moses as the people were grumbling and mumbling behind him, like, Moses, we sitting out here, dude. You brought us out here to die. 
We could have just died in, in slavery. We could have died in bondage. And so Moses was seeking God for direction and for help because now, God, you told me to go get these people. Now they mad at me. <clears throat> and if you really look at the historical data, those people were a little like you and me. And they're fussing and they're fighting. God tells Moses, take what's in your hand. Take the rod and hold it up and then you stretch it out. Yes. And when he stretched it out, that's when the sea parted. And God's going to tell you in your own person, like, what's in your hand? Work what you got. Yeah. My mom used to say it this way, take what you got and make what you want. Yeah. Whatever you stand in, she said, if you're, if you're hungry <clears throat> and you only got two pieces of bread, she said, you just got mustard, then make your mustard sandwich. Yeah. Mama used to say, if you only got one piece of bread, and you just got peanut butter and jelly, make your peanut butter and jelly sandwich and fold the bread. Mama used to say, if all you got is french fries, just fry the french fries and just have a french fry party. Take what you got and make what you need because you need to eat. She taught us how to eat with what we had in the cupboard. Go to the cupboard and look and see what you got and take what you, that's why some of us are good cooks now because we took what we had and we made it to filet me young. We took the tuna in the can and we took the salmon in the can and we began to mix it all together. <clears throat> and we went and got a big bag of lettuce and we made us a salmon salad. We took what we had and we, we the only thing we had was that and so we made what we needed to get by what we need. And my whole point to this story is simply is that when you're standing at the Red Sea of your life and you cannot go backwards and the enemy's on your trail, Ask God for the plan and strategy. He may build you a bridge to go across the Red Sea. He may tend you a boat to go across the Red Sea. And he may tell you just to walk across the Red Sea. What I love the most <clears throat> about that miracle is this. When he stretched forth his hand, they had dry land. And he told them to walk across on dry land. You're walking across dry land in the middle of the Red Sea? God knows you so much and loves you so much, and he's so um, not omnipotent, so powerful. Yeah. Look how strategic he is. You are walking across the Red Sea on dry land. You see your enemy behind you, and you still walking, and you still walking, and all of a sudden, you're in the middle of the Red Sea. You get to the other side. Check God out. Once you got to the other side yeah. and and the last one got on dry ground yeah, yeah. away from the sea as soon as that happened he closed up the Red Sea he wanted to make sure check out this the Bible says he let it Pharaoh's army get in the middle of the sea mm -hmm. so that when he brought the sea back together mm -hmm. they were drowned right there yeah. That's why he said, the enemy you see today, you'll never see before. You'll never see them again. Mm -hmm. He wanted to make sure that they didn't have a chance to run back, Pharaoh and his army, to get back to the, to the ground. Mm -hmm. So he let them come all the way in the middle of the Red Sea. Yeah. And he let them get right there, and they, and they think they got you now. And he had just enough time between the last Israelite to get across in Pharaoh's army, and they drowned in the Red Sea. That's how powerful your God is. Yeah. If people try to touch you and mess with you, he'll drown them in the Red Sea. It's going to look like you're losing in life on the scoreboard of life. You look like you're losing. But when God gets finished with your situation and he gets finished with dealing with your enemy when it comes to you, concerning you, he's going to make them drown in the Red Sea of whatever they have to deal with. Because you don't have to worry about chasing a lie. You don't have to worry about your enemy because when God gets just finished taking care of you, he gonna show you how omnipotent he really is and how powerful he really is. And so you gotta understand, God will turn things around in your favor. Yeah. Because he loves you that much because he's supernatural, powerful God. That if he can take them in the Red Sea, then when you get to your Red Sea in your life, he would turn things around in your favor for you as well. Let me close up, he's omnipresent. He is everywhere you look and turn. There is God. 
you cannot go anywhere without God. I love, the, I love this first one. This is my favorite one. It says in Psalm 139, he says, Whether shall I go from thy spirit? Where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend into the heavens, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, God, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the utmost parts of the sea, God is there. Yeah. No matter where you go, God is there. Yeah. Whether you go to work, God is there. Yeah. And he can express himself there as well. No matter where you go and how long you go and how far you go, you can never get away from God. Yeah. God is there everywhere you go. He is there. Yeah. He is omnipresent. Mm -hmm. Finally, he's omniscient. He's all-knowing. He's the God that knows it all. Anything that comes to your life, he knew it was going to come before you and I knew it. Amen. That's why when things come to your life, you only just need to say these words. God, you knew it was coming. Yes. And now it's here. Mm -hmm. And you pray for the strength you need. You don't pray to God like, oh, my God, this thing has happened. No, he knew it was coming. Matter of fact, not only did he knew it was coming, but he, 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 he gives permission for things to come. Mm -hmm. And so he's omniscient and omnipresent, omnipotent. He is unquestionable, and he is a provider. Amen. God in his faithfulness yes, yes. will always show himself to you because of your faith in him. So always understanding he's unquestionable. He's a provider. He's omnipotent. He's omnipresent. And he's omniscient, which means he's all-knowing. God is faithful, Amen. and there's no other God as faithful as he is. When you trace back your life, you can always trace back the hand of God in your life and the more consistent God in your life. Amen? Amen. God bless you. I hope and pray something was said or done. To